Often when we talk about leadership, we focus on the top tier leader, the number one, the captain of the ship, the CEO. Well, today we're going to talk about the second chair. How important is it to have the great second chair in your organization, in your church ministry, and what's the value and what's the meaning and the purpose of that number two? And today we're going to have a little fun with it. We're going to jump into the world of Star Trek, and we're going to look at some of the great number twos that have helped some of the greatest leaders in all of Star Trek be who they are. Stick around. Hey, it's a trigger, Rich Bond Trigger, back for another Leaders and Communicators. And yes, we are going to look at Star Trek. And we're going to look at characters and leadership, specifically the second chair leadership roles that we see throughout the Star Trek universe. I've been a pastor, I've been a leader, I've been a communicator. In all those areas, I've always had a great number two, or as they say in Star Trek, a number one that has helped me do what I can do so I can do it better. So I can lead from the top level, and there are some people that have that amazing gift and wiring, and they are the best thing you could have. So rather than ignore them this week, we're going to talk about what does it take to be a great number two. And if you stick around all the way to the very end, I'm going to have a tip sheet for you, a nice way to help you look further at the number two position, and I'm going to give you a book recommendation. So give me a like, give me a share, give me a comment this week about second chair leadership. And hit that big subscribe button, and right to the side, tap that bell. When you tap that bell, that will lock you in so you will not miss another leaders and communicators as we continue to share with you. And one of my newest themes that I really am passionate about, defying the odds. But this week, we're looking at second chair leadership. First of all, a second chair leader is not a second class leader. That is a big myth, and it's a big emotional thing that often appears to people. We think we need to be the number one man, number one woman in the number one chair, but that's not true. Being the number two does not slight you in leadership. It just is a different role for you to have. In fact, the top tier leader, I encourage you, I challenge you to raise the value of your second tier leaders, your second chair individuals. We need to champion them and let people know up front they have the power, they have the authority, they are put in position for the reason. Go to the world of Star Trek. How many times did Captain Kirk say, and this is my first officer, Mr. Spock? Or Captain Picard, he would turn and say, number one? And William Riker would step up and he would assert himself and take the lead. Picard did not have to do it all. And he had to set him up. He had set Riker up as the one that would take the point and the lead. So important for us top tier leaders to elevate the second chair people so people know they are there for a reason. Now, the second thing about a second chair position is they fill the gaps of the top number one, so to speak. Let's go back to Star Trek for a second. Captain Picard had Riker. Captain Picard was not the touchy-feely man on the bridge or with his team. Riker had the emotional connection. He had the human side of the very mission-oriented Picard, and the two made a great team. One without the other would not succeed. In true leadership, that is very true. Often, vision casters, top-tier leaders, we get focused on mission and not on people. The best way I have been able to get through that myself is that I need to have people, loved people, at the number two chair that remind me not to steamroll them, but to love them to encourage them, to stop and recognize them, to help me, I need to have a great number two do that job. Now, the third principle we want to look at is the second chair leaders are the best mirrors we have as leaders. The best mirrors we could have. Some of the best conversations, hardest conversations I've ever had is with some of my right-hand people that have closed the door and helped me process things, wrestle with things, and even help challenge me but it's always closed door. They have earned that position. We have asked them into that position, and we must use them as reflective mirrors. Go back to Star Trek Enterprise. Captain Archer and T'Pol. Many times they would go to the ready room, and they would have a private conversation that Archer would wrestle with an issue, an ethical, moral, a leadership issue. 
And he would have to try to steer the way through that, and he would reflect onto Pao, and she would be the mirror, the reflection to help him process and deal with it. And then they would open up the door, go back out together, and Archer would lead more effectively because of their closed-door conversation. Second chair leaders, you have a special place. Do not ignore that role of being the mirror to the leader of your organization. And leaders, embrace them. Bring them into that conversation and allow them to be the mirror that they should be to make you better, to make you healthier, to make you stronger out on the front lines. The fourth principle about a second chair leader is that they have the pulse on the team or the organization where the top tier leader cannot. The further you get from your team, the more separate you become as a top tier leader, the harder it is to understand how the team feels, what they're thinking, what their needs are. The second chair leader has an incredible impact of spending time where you no longer have the ability or time or resources to spend. In Star Trek, it wasn't just a poker game. Riker was hanging out with the other leaders, the other crewmen, to hear and feel and connect with them because Captain Picard could not be there. This is a vital role to have as a second-tier leader. You need to know what the pulse and the feel of your people is without always having every birthday party, every anniversary, every concert. You just can't be there, leaders. So a great number two takes on that role and feeds it back up to you and acts as a conduit back down to them to keep that connection going. Now the fifth and final step I want to bring out our principle is that the second chair leader has a flexibility and a freedom that the top chair leader does not have. Boy, sometimes it's good not to be the one in the center chair making all the decisions. As a church planner, as a pastor, I have coached this, I have taught this, and I have lived this. There are times when you are alone and you make the decisions and there's a weight there's a burden. It's like the mantle is weighing on you, and it's something only you can take on. Sometimes a second chair leader, you don't have to carry that burden, but you can come alongside and carry that burden with them, but not for them. Let me encourage you. If you're a number two, I want you to embrace that, because it's okay not to want that burden. You want to have the freedom. You want to have that connectivity, but you want to be the best cheer, you know, cheerleader, the best encourager, and you want to fill that gap like no one else can fill that gap between the captain, the top leader, the visionary, the CEO, and between what the mission and the vision really is. And for that, I thank you for being great second chair leaders. So give me a like, give me a share, give me a comment. Does this make sense about second chair leaders? How do you fit into the matrix? Are you a top leader? But you may be wondering, am I a second chair leader? Maybe am I out of position? Maybe you're a second chair leader that have always wrestled with the idea, I'm a lesser than. Maybe today you've heard for the first time, you're not a lesser than. You're a very, very important component of leadership. And we need you. So, go down to the comment bar below. Go down to that little description. And in that you will find a tip sheet about more second chair leadership ideas and principles. And there is a book to recommend for you to go read about second chair leadership. You'll find the link. It takes you right to Amazon and check it out. That's going to do it for this week. I'm the Trigger Rich Bontrager. I hope you've enjoyed this unique look at leadership through the lens of Star Trek. Until next week, God bless. I'll see you then.